little bit of forward pressure. There's V1. Rotate. Welcome one and welcome all to Tokyo Narita Airport in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 and they don't come more beautiful than this ladies and gentlemen look at our beautiful Japan Airlines flight uh, 747 was it let me just check real quick for you guys 741 in the background here we have the beautiful 787-10 powered by the heavy division mod fired up and ready to go in the background actually it's not fired up and ready to go to be honest we have only the power um, turned on for the aircraft the battery and the ground power um, however GSX is currently at work we are currently boarding the aircraft with all those beautiful faces aka the passengers aka the crying babies um, we also have the uh, this woman trying to uh, load our aircraft with baggage but there is no baggage to be loaded so that is a little bit surprising we have around about 138 passengers to be able to take on today's flight so that's pretty interesting we have also requested for catering vehicles anyway all of that stuff will progress as and when we uh, keep going with the flight for today however we're going to be taking this japan airlines flight 741 all the way from here in tokyo narita romeo juliet alpha alpha all the way to manila in philippines so it is going to be an international flight um manila is i KO code Romeo Papa Lima Lima. The flight time total gate to gate is around about four hours and 54 minutes. So you guys better subscribe to the channel right now because I'm going to be sitting at my desk for five hours, albeit doing some other work as well, but recording this video for you guys because I've been getting requests to do international flights and not just, you know, one hour or one and a half hour domestic hops. So all of that stuff is going to be coming in today's flight. Now, a couple of things right before we get started with the programming of this aircraft for departure. Uh, I have been seeing a lot of the comments um, on my YouTube videos telling me to do the A320 aircraft dissected series. Now, ladies and gentlemen, on screen right now, you guys are seeing just my previous aircraft dissected series script. And as you can see, it is very, very thorough. I have to do a lot of research, a lot of synthesis to be able to produce the kind of videos that you will eventually end up liking. So um, don't rush it. I am currently trying to get something out to you guys I'm still at my day job so I'm doing all of this on the side uh, just give me a little bit of time I'm working on it but I will I assure you when it does eventually drop it is going to be off the highest quality as usual as you can expect from flyby simulations uh, so with that all said I think we're successfully boarding the aircraft. As you can see, this uh, scenery, I think, is the Drzecki Designs uh, Narita International Airport. And where we're going is going to be the Cloud Surf Simulations Manila. So I'll leave links to both sceneries down in the description section of this video if you guys want to follow along, as well as the overall flight plan that I have from Simbrief. I'll leave a link to that PDF as well down in the description if you guys do want to fly the same route as me. Um, but with that all said, let's jump into the flight deck and get started. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so disclaimer, I haven't flown the 787 in the simulator at all. So zero flying experience in the simulator whatsoever. So it's going to be a completely new experience. Uh, so I guess you guys are in for a ride with me. Um, we have the battery running as well as the external power running. What else can we We also have the nav and logo light running. So I think the first thing to do is to align the IRSs. So let's turn both the left and right IRSs to on. And now on, down on the um, FMC, we can start the programming. So of course, it's a little bit different uh, than the 737 and the A320, as you can see. But I think the overall FMS is pretty similar. So if we go to the init ref page, uh, I guess we don't go to the init ref. Let's just go to the ident page. There we go. Let's go to the pause init. Uh, can we click on this? Is it going to allow us to click on it? There we go. Our departure airport is going to be Romeo Juliet Alpha Alpha. The gate we're currently at is 62. I don't know if it's going to accept that. There we go. And do we have a next page here? No, we don't. So let's go ahead and take the GPS position from here and input that into here. Uh, set heading. I don't think we really need to do that. We can go to the route page next and we can enter the same information. So Romeo Juliet Alpha Alpha is going to be our origin airport and Romeo Papa Lima Lima, as I said before, Manila Airport is going to be our destination. So that is set. I don't know why flight number is set to Ryanair 818. That was my previous flight. So if you guys haven't checked that out, make sure to do that. I will leave a link down in the description section of the video. Beautiful arrival into Edinburgh from Dublin. Uh, so we're taking JAL 741 
Let's go ahead and enter that in there. Uh, the runway, we're not going to enter for now. Co company route, we don't have one, so that's okay. Uh, we can go ahead and actually now enter the departure and arrival information. So, we're going to be taking off of runway 34 left according to our beautiful SimBrief flight plan, which, as you can see, is on screen right now. All van 2 departure and the Samus transition. So, all of that is pretty much good to go. We can go to route. Uh, activate. There we go. We don't have to execute that just yet. We can go to the next page and we can start entering the rest of the route. So from OVAN, actually we should probably execute that. Um, OVAN 2 should not have taken us to OVAN to be honest, but let's just see if we can do the Yankee 84 airway from here. Now the 787, yeah it says an airway mismatch. The 787 is not as refined as some of the other add-ons we've been flying, including the, um, the fly-by-wire, which happens to be free as well, but um, the 787 is way more sort of rugged, so we're gonna have to like discover it as and when we uh, uh, keep going with our route, but I think it's going to be an experience nonetheless. So after this, we're gonna go to Mupob. Let's go in and enter that in. M-U-P-O-B. Here we go. That works. And then direct to can do. We can do this flight. Please don't butcher me in the comment section for that i'm sorry i won't ever do that again uh from there we're going to polio and that is a deadly virus but i guess that is a waypoint in fact it's also a star so polio 7 papa star so let's go ahead and departure arrivals and let's select ils runway 24 arrival and the polio um it's probably at the end lmo polio 3 polio 7 papa arrival there we go and the transition, we don't really have one, but we can go ahead and execute that as well. So there's the departure arrival information entered. I think we have the IRS systems aligning. So now from the base package 787, the uh, heavy division actually ends up adding some system information. So you can actually go ahead and take a look at some of this data. So the hydraulics are inoperative, but the electrical page is fully simulated. The doors page is simulated the air conditioning page, the status page, all of this stuff uh, is very, very useful information that will help. Uh, as well as that, I'm also using a rugged cockpit textures mod. I don't know if you guys can notice some of the rugged textures on the throttle, as well as the speed brake and some of the other components in the aircraft, uh, especially the MCP. Some of these switches you can see have a little bit of uh, ruggedness to them, and that comes from that uh, texture pack that I'm using. It's for free. It's on flightsim.2. Again, I'll leave a link to that in the description section as well, so you guys can have the perfect 787 experience. So... Without all done, I think uh, what we normally do, we have boarding completed as well from GSX, so that's good. All the passengers are sitting in the aircraft. So let's go ahead and get the APU running so we can get some air conditioning for them. So uh, let's go ahead and say APU start. And anything else we can do here on the overhead panel? It automatically turns on the left forward fuel pump or the left aft fuel, catering uh, fuel pump. Catering vehicles are on their way. Okay, so GSX has told us that the catering vehicles are on the way. Uh, I do love the fact that there are static aircraft uh, on this airport. A lot of people just don't like static aircraft, but I am of the belief that static aircraft are nice, especially because I don't have to use AIG traffic to help populate the airport, and AIG traffic eats FPS. So I'm glad that, you know, there's a less FPS-hungry way of um, creating immersion inside the sim. Uh, anyway, I think the APU should be coming on. In fact, a good way to check that is probably to go into the electrical page and we can see that the APU generators are indeed active here. So we can go ahead and take APU Gen 1 and 2 on. Those sounds also come from a sound pack I'm using. That's a payware sound pack. I don't know. I think it's FT Sim is the sound pack producer. So I will leave a link to that as well down in the description section of the video. I've invested a lot in this channel, ladies and gentlemen, for the quality that I hope to bring to Flyby Simulation. So if you guys are enjoying the content you guys are seeing, please make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of my content. So... I think the APU generators are now working. We can go ahead and disconnect the aft external power. No longer need that uh, as we are completely self-sustainable. And uh, I don't think none of the pack systems here work. So I think it's all automatic. It all just, you know, gives us uh, pressurization and bleed air and stuff like that automatically. So that is all good to go. Uh, left pack trim air. None of this is accessible yet yeah, as, as predicted. Okay, so now we can go ahead and enter some performance data. So... Uh, going into the root page, oops, sorry, the root page here, the performance initialization. Okay, so one thing we can do is we can go to the heavy page and the payload manager is pretty simple here. As you can see, we have the fuel on board and the payload. So we just have to enter the maximum fuel that we're going to be carrying, which is going to be 25,393 for today's flight. Uh, 25 
uh, tons. Here you go, and we can go ahead and enter that in. So these are the required values, as you can see, and we, when we execute that, that's going to populate that as actual values. Uh, payload, uh, we're gonna be taking for today's flight, the total is going to be 32.2 um, tons. So 32.2, let's see if that works, or do we have to enter the full thing? Nope, it doesn't. So let's go ahead and enter 32,200 kilograms of fuel, there we go, uh, of payload, I'm sorry. And let's go ahead and execute that. There we go, as you can see the aircraft is moving and the remaining payload is being entered into the aircraft as we speak. So fuel was almost instanta instantaneous, but the payload uh, of course takes a little bit of time. It's running, but that's good. Uh, they have that as well integrated, this heavy division menu. Also one of the biggest things you might see is that the uh, uh, the PFD and the ND aren't automatically aligned in the aircraft, which is something completely new. Uh, you would you would have noticed that. Oop, I think we just, is that the air conditioning off? I think that's just a sign that we need to be starting the engines soon. So uh, let's go back here and let's program a few couple other things. Um, so let's go back to the root page, the performance initialization, the zero fuel weight that the aircraft is giving us is 167.7. We have a, an actual zero fuel weight of 168.9, but I think this should be more accurate. Reserve fuel, let me just get back to you guys about that. Just give me one second. All right, so the reserve fuel we're gonna be taking is going to be 5.5. So let's go ahead and enter that in there as well. Um, and cruise altitude for today's flight is going to be 400. So there are step climbs, but I am apprehensive in terms of entering those step climbs. I, I don't really know if it's gonna work. So I'm just gonna enter the maximum flight altitude we're gonna be reaching for today's flight. Cost index is gonna be 30. Minimum fuel temperature is automatically calculated. Cruise center of gravity is gonna be 20.1%. And we can move on to the thrust limit page. Now, I am pretty sure uh, that the runway length uh, here, uh, runway 34 left at Romeo Juliet Alpha Alpha is uh, long. So it's four kilometer long runway. So we should be able to do something like 65 degrees as a selected temperature. That gives us 83.4 degrees N1. Uh, takeoff is set. Climb thrust, we can just set to uh, arm. So we don't, actually, you know what? Let's just go with climb derated thrust as well. Uh, we can go to takeoff and we can set flap five. As usual, I'm pretty sure it's flap five in this aircraft as well. Let me just double check. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we take flap five. I think everything is turning off in the background. I don't know what's going on. Maybe I'll put some background music for you guys to enjoy because things are very, very quiet here in the background. I don't know what's ha what's happening. Uh, okay, so thrust is set, runway position, blah, blah, blah. I don't think these values work here. I think uh, V1, VR, and V2 are automatically calculated. There we go. Can we enter some other stuff in here? Uh, wind, we can enter the wind, we can give it the wind information it needs. So according to the latest METAR, let me just calculate that real quick. METAR one zero. All right, so the METAR. All right, so the METAR suggests that the wind is 40 degrees at 13 knots. So let's go ahead and enter that in. Oh, I don't think it works, to be honest. Uh, never mind. Uh, FMC pre-flight complete. So I think we're pretty much good to go in that respect. The primary flight display and the navigation displays have aligned as well. I think catering is still in progress, or are we just done with catering? Yeah, we just finished catering. There we go. Sounds good. And we can go ahead and see if we can't get... You know what? Let's just take the aft and uh, forward external power. Maybe that's what's uh, that's what's causing... There we go. Let's just let's just keep that on for a while. All right. So let's enter all the pertinent values on the MCP. Uh, so let's go back to the previous page here. The V2 happens to be 163 knots. We're going to go ahead and enter that in here. Uh, here we go. And the runway heading for today is going to be 337 degrees. So let's enter that in here as well. Our transition altitude, I've checked, is 14,000 feet out of Narita. Um, but our initial climb clearance, as you can see on the chart, happens to be... Do we have an initial climb? From 3-4 left, we have an initial climb to 7,000 feet. So let's go ahead and set 7,000 here. Here we go. And let's go ahead and set LNAV and VNAV. That works. Flight directors can come on. I think it does it automatically on both sides. Auto throttle is already armed. And I think we're pretty much good to go in that respect. So I think we're ready to go apart from, uh, let's also go ahead and set 1025 uh, hectopascals here on the standby altimeter. 
And let's also set that here on the main altimeter. Let's switch to hectopascals and set 1025. I think it should align on both sides automatically. Yep, it's doing that there already. Sounds good. So, 163 degrees on the V2, 337 degrees is going to be the heading, 7,000 feet were, is our initial climb, um, catering's done, boarding I'm pretty sure is done, I don't know why this uh, gate isn't detaching from us, but we can go ahead and request pushback services. So, let's go ahead and say boarding completed, uh, operate jetways, blah blah blah, let's go ahead and say prepare for pushback and departure. So, departure clearance has been requested. And we can go ahead and close a couple doors. So, oh no, these doors are automatically closed. The jetway has now disconnected and we are pretty much ready to go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, again, I'm very sorry if I don't seem as competent with this aircraft as I do with the 737 and the um, A320. That's because, as I said before, I haven't flown this aircraft. They also have region-specific um, region looking people. This, this, this gentleman definitely looks Japanese. Uh, we can go up to the overhead panel and we can see if we can't get the fuel pumps started up for pushback. Do we have any fuel in the center? Again, something we can check now. We can go to the systems page and we can go to fuel. We have zero fuel in the center. So we can go back to the system page again. And we can go ahead and make sure that the center fuel pumps are indeed off, which they are. Uh, right and left, hydraulics, nothing to worry about. They're all unclickable at the moment. We can go ahead and turn the seatbelt signs on now that the fueling has completed. We had a little bit of rain before uh, when I tried to record this video earlier. I had to scratch that recording because I was talking into nothingness. My audio never recorded. So this is attempt number two. And, oh, we can check this. So for today's flight, we are going to be doing a nose left uh, pushback. So let's go ahead and select nose left. And he's saying locking gear, so he's getting everything ready to go. We can also get the beacon light up and running, so everybody around our vicinity knows that we are about to start the engines, and they need to steer clear. Uh, everything else is pretty much good to go, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm pretty happy. Let's just see if any new problems develop during our flight. I hope they don't. I very much hope they don't, because I, I wouldn't know how to deal with them in this aircraft. I would have to use pure wit and um and my remarkable powers of acting on the spot which never really works release parking brakes alrighty so let's go ahead and release this parking brake commencing push all engines clear start at will alrighty we're pushing back so let's go ahead and get engine number one and two started so the bleed air system on the 787 happens to be so good that you can start both engines at the same time which is pretty impressive so there we go, we can start engine number one and engine number two. We'll go ahead and start one, them one at a time because we like to hear the sounds. Let's go ahead and inject the fuel into engine number one. Here we go. So the fuel injection is also actually automatic. Unlike the 737 and such, you don't have to wait for the uh, N2 to spool up to a certain level and then inject the fuel. You can inject the fuel almost instantly. So that's also a pretty cool feature about the 787. But uh, I have to say, on the other hand, the clouds in the distance look very beautiful. So we are going to have a scenic departure out of here. So uh, buckle in, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pretty excited about this. Alrighty, we can hear the rumble of those engines in the background. And GSX, as usual, has done a beautiful job positioning us on the taxiway. Great job. It should be stopping just about now. Here we go. So we have 23.3% and one. I think engine is available. So let's go ahead and start engine number two here as well. There we go. And we can go ahead and start it instantly. I'll let you guys enjoy the sounds on the right as well. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys enjoyed that. We can still hear the rumble of the engines here in the back, which is pretty, pretty exciting. So, we can go ahead and tell GSX to disconnect. Um, select parking facility. We don't really care. Oh, they want us to first set the parking brake, of course. Apologies for that. And then now we can tell GSX uh, that they can... Oh, they're not... I don't think they're willing to leave. In position, please set parking brakes. I think he's going to go away first and then he's going to request us to tell him that the engines have been started appropriately. There he is. 
Is he just gonna stop there? What's the plan, sir? He's just gonna look away from us? Are you playing patty cake with you, sir? Look, look towards us, please. Come on. Yo. I have set the parking brakes, man. Oh well, if this doesn't work, we know what to do. We just have to go ahead and, um... We just have to go ahead and say restart C-O-U-A-T-L and that's gonna get rid of GSX altogether. Here we go. There we go. So, GSX has been taken care of. Uh, we can go ahead and get the flaps down to flap 5 as predicted and we can go to the flight control page. I think there is a flight control page. Yes, there is. So now we can check the flight controls. Full up, check, full down, neutral, full right, full left, neutral, rudder full right, rudder full left, neutral. That's a successful flight control check if I've ever seen one. Let's get back to the ND and uh, we have a beautiful taxi map here as well. So it's going to help us a lot, but that is going to be our route today. So we're going to be flying uh, northwest and then taking a right turn due east and then flying all the way back southeast and then over towards the southwest. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and take the taxi light on. Actually, now we can uh, now we have the engines running for sure. So we can go ahead and take the APU generators off. Turn off the APU as well. No longer need that. And we can get the um, taxi light on here to be able to taxi. There we go. Let's go ahead and turn the parking brake off. And we're ready for departure, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see if there's any TCAS system that we can explore here. So there's a transponder. We can put in a transponder code of 2000 here. Here we go. Sounds good. And let's give it a little bit of oomph and see if we can't get rolling. All right, ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys enjoyed that taxi. I have to say, even when I was in the wing view, I was listening to some of the sounds of the engines and they were very sexy. <laughs> it, just, it just sounds very, very nice and rumbly. Uh, I don't know if that's actually what the engines sound like in a 787 because they're supposed to be a very quiet aircraft. Uh, those uh, raked wingtips uh, along with the, um, the chevrons at the back of the engines are supposed to really help with noise uh, abatement. So. Uh, I don't know why the engines do sound like that, the rumbly sound of the engines, but uh, I'm not going to complain because I like a little bit of exaggeration when it comes to flight simulator. There's a reason I fly in a simulator and not the real thing, right? Um, it's because I want to experience all of it. So we're coming up on runway 34 left. As I said, I think this is going to be Alpha 9. Uh, let me just check real quick. Yeah, the next right we're going to be taking is Alpha 9. So what we can do is we can go ahead and take weather radar on my side and we can set terrain on the first officer's side. Um, we can also cycle the range um, on this side a little bit more, just like my side. Here we go. And we can go ahead and see if we can take um, TCAST to TARA. I don't know if that works here. Not sure. Let's take a look at that in just a second. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and slow it down. Of course, I'm already starting to realize how much of a less refined aircraft this is compared to some of the other ones. The taxiing also seems extremely choppy and uh, unrealistic. The wings are, you know, sort of bouncing from side to side. There's a reason this aircraft hasn't gained the amount of traction as the fly-by-wire A320 or even the Salty Sim 747, uh, which happens to be a more refined aircraft than this. So that's just my personal opinion. Of course, it's always good to have some variety uh, on the channel, but yeah, I would I would prefer if this aircraft was uh, better done. So we'll get all the lights on. We'll get the wing light on as well, ready to go. Uh, I don't know if there's a clock that I can hit um, on this on this particular um, 
Uh, there's a clock there that says elapsed time 36 minutes. Now, I don't know if I can reset that or something. There's a clock button there, so I should be able to hit a clock. And we should be able to use that. So let's see if we can't do that. Let's hit the clock button. Here we go. Does that do something? Do we do we get some clock indication? Oh, it just turns it on and off, I guess. That's all that it does. That's okay. All right, so we're taking off at around about... Um, 9.37 local time, which is extremely accurate. The real aircraft also takes off at exactly 9.37, so we're we're doing a very good job. Let's do it. Let's go ahead and do a rolling takeoff as usual. So we're on the center line of the runway. Let's go ahead and give it 50% thrust. Here we go, and let's go ahead and give it toga. I don't know if there's a toga button I can hit but I can set it approximately to the toga value we configured. Here we go, airspeed is alive. That's 100 knots. A little bit of forward pressure, there's V1. Rotate. Here we go. Smooth rotation out. Positive rate, gear up. Let's go up to 15 degrees. Keep it there. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is a successful departure out of Romeo Juliet Alpha Alpha. There seems to be a lot of terrain warnings I'm getting on the uh, first officer's ND. Don't really know what to make of that, but that's okay. Let's try to see if we can come down on the uh, primary flight display there. We're climbing successfully. Look at that. Looks beautiful. Okay, so as usual, we'll go ahead and take flaps in and uh, take autopilot on so we can enjoy some of the views. Getting close to flap 5 uh, retraction altitude. Flap 5 retracted. Continuing to climb. Getting a little bit of turbulence as we take off out of here. That's completely to be expected, but look at that, ladies and gentlemen. That's the city of Tokyo over there. Coming close to around about uh, flap one there as well, so... Let's go ahead and take flap one. Here we go. And let's go ahead and arm the autopilot. Now the autopilot should take care of everything else. We continue to climb. We're climbing past 4,500 feet. Let's go ahead and set a higher altitude over here on the MCP. Let's go ahead and set 40,000 feet. We can just continue climbing all the way to that altitude using VNAV, of course. So I think we're seeing a few terrain warnings over there in the distance. We're climbing through these clouds. So let's go to the wing view and enjoy. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so we've leveled off at 10,000 feet to help build speed. I'm going to go ahead and take landing lights off and we're going to take the runway turnoffs and the taxi lights off as well. The wing light can also come off since it's a basically a daytime flight. And uh, there's the scenery down there ladies and gentlemen. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Wow, that looks beautiful. Japan is truly a beautiful city. I think they've also had a world update in the simulator to make them look all nice. There's that right turn we're taking. Let's go ahead and watch that.
Wow, what a turn that was. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so with that, I think we are done with this episode. Of course, there's going to be two episodes. This first episode covers the departure and uh, takeoff out of uh, Narita International Airport, and the next episode is going to cover the landing and arrival into Manila. So if you guys wish to check that out, make sure to give this video a like, first of all, so that the YouTube algorithm recommends that video to you, as well as subscribe to the channel and hit that little notification bell right next to the subscribe button so you guys are notified every time I upload one of these videos. Now, the 787 in the background is doing a few erratic things, but that is for me to contend with. For you guys, all you have to do is now look forward to the next video that's going to be coming out. So, with that all said, thanks for flying by.